Netflix. I do it for the kids. All for the youngest. Young man, always hey. surfing. No ways. Uh huh. I, I do, do it for, for the kids. kids. They wanna know. They wanna know who I do it for. Who I do it for. I do it all. I, I do, do it all. all. I do it for the kids. Well, hey, welcome to the Daily Snack. I'm so glad that you chose to come and hang out a little bit today. Hope that you were able to get comfy and grab a snack. And obviously, you press play because you're watching me now. My name is Jeff. And like I said, glad to hang out with you today here at the Daily Snack. Now, I've got one quick announcement to get us going. And that is this week is the last week of the first season of the Daily Snack. We've been doing this for a few months now. Uh, every day we've been with you, but just like your favorite TV shows, we're going to take a little bit of a break. So I'm going to be with you all week, and then we're going to take a break until May gets here, when season two of The Daily Snack will launch. But uh, today, man, I'm so glad you are here. And as you know, on Mondays, we always have some fun. Now, if you started watching The Daily Snack maybe kind of recently, you don't know everything that we've done on Monday, but we've had a lot of fun uh, doing some things. In fact, uh, today on The Daily Snack, I just want to just kind of take a little walk down memory lane and see some of the fun that we've had on Mondays. Let's check it out. I like my celery dipped in ranch. And I like my celery in the trash. Well, just to recap, uh, that T-shirt was that cold, and that durian tasted that bad. Uh, I hope you had a whole time, a, whole, a good time walking down memory lane. What was your favorite? Uh, we had all, we all have our own favorites from that, and maybe you want to go back and check out some of those full episodes. Maybe you never saw fr frozen T-shirt contest and stuff like that. Like I said, we're taking, we're going to take a little break here. At the, we're at the end of the first season, at the end of this week, but then we'll be coming back in May to have all kinds of great fun with you. Now, what are we talking about this week in the last week of the daily snack, of the first season of the Daily Snack? Well, we're going to keep walking through the greatest story ever told. And so far in the greatest story ever told, we've walked through 4,000 years of the story. Man, how many stories do you read that travel 4,000 years? It's amazing. We started way back in 4,000-ish BC, and last week we kind of got up to zero-ish. And uh, now we're ready to head into uh, AD dates, which is where we're at now, right? This is the year 2021 AD. Now, you might be wondering, BC, AD, what the heck do those things even mean? Well, BC, when you translate it into English, means before Christ. And AD is Latin, Anno Domini. It means in the year of our Lord. That's right. Our calendar system is based on the birth of a guy named Jesus. And we're going to be talking about Jesus today in The Greatest Story Ever Told, or this week in The Greatest Story Ever Told, because we're really at a crucial element of the story. It's in every story, every movie that you've ever seen or read. The story, this part of the story is called the climax. It's the turning point for the whole narrative. Normally you get a problem in the beginning, and we saw that in our greatest story ever told, and then things get worse as the characters of the story try to work this problem out, but then there's always a climax where things turn for the better, uh, and where the solution to the problem that they have is given. And we're going to learn this week that Jesus is the climax, the turning point, the solution, and the greatest story ever told. He is the solution to our problem with something called sin. We learn all about Jesus' birth and life and teaching and death and resurrection, all kinds of stuff, in the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we call these the Gospels. They're right, kind of right in the center of the story. They're at the center of all time, and they're all about Jesus, who's the center of our faith. Man, I've got to tell you, it's going to be exciting stuff this week as we continue on with the greatest story. And we learn that the Bible, and it's not just a book, it is the greatest story 
ever told. I hope you join me tomorrow because we're going to be looking at some things upside down. Tomorrow we're going to test your ability to read some things upside down as we continue on with the greatest story. Well, hey, welcome to Tuesday's edition of the Daily Snack. My name is Jeff. Thanks for spending a little bit of time hanging out with me today as we continue to uh, walk through this greatest story ever told. We've been doing this for a few weeks where we've looked at this story uh, that is the Bible. It's not just a collection of little things, although it is that. It's also one big story. And we've looked at the beginnings of all kinds of things. How God created this awesome world. How the decision to disobey God has made our world kind of go like this. We've seen how God never gave up on us. was there all along with us. And how he had a plan for a savior. uh, A fancy word called a Messiah. A new king to come and rescue us from our problem. Last week we saw in the book of prophets all the predictions about that Messiah. And this week, we see an unexpected twist to the story. That Savior comes. And we learn that the kingdom of God is here. It's not somewhere in heaven we have to go to. The kingdom of God is actually here. So let's let's not waste time. Let's get right into the story and see what this kingdom of God is all about. Because this sounds like a great plot twist that we should be aware of. Now, I'm going to be showing you some words that are upside down. And for fun... They're in cursive, which I know that lots of us don't learn to read now. So I'm going to put these up on the screen and I'm going to give you three seconds to see if you can read our upside down word. All right. First upside down word is here. All right. You had three seconds. Uh, what, what was it? What was our word? What'd you think? All right. Here it is. It's the word teacher. And let me tell you uh, one story of Jesus from the New Testament of the Bible. Because this one story is going to help us really understand what this kingdom coming is all about. And, if you pay attention, why we're showing you upside down words. Alright, here we go. One day, while Jesus was in a synagogue, that was a place where Jewish people gathered to worship and to read the Bible. Jesus saw a man with a crippled hand. It was the Sabbath day, which was a special day... described in the Old Testament where no work could be done according to the Jewish law. Jesus said to the man, I want you to stand up in front of everyone. And then Jesus turned to the Pharisees. These were kind of religious leader guys. They were really, really, really concerned about religious laws. And Jesus asked them, what does our law allow us to do on the Sabbath? Save someone's life or destroy it? But they sat there like this. They didn't want to answer him. All right, I've got another picture for you. Three seconds. Here we go. All right, that was three seconds. What do you think the word was? That word is healer. Now, Jesus said to the man in this story, stretch out your hand. And as he stretched it out, it was completely healed. The man's life had been turned upside down. He had been, uh, had a disability before, and now he was healed. Jesus had done the unexpected and he changed this man's life forever. Now the number of miracles that Jesus performed on earth, just like this one, are way too many to count. I mean, there's a bunch written down in the Bible, but there's a ton more that couldn't fit in there. John says at the end of his letter that if if you wrote down everything Jesus did, you'd never stop writing. Now, uh, he shared this message of his kingdom in each place he traveled, Jesus did. And this message continued to pass on those through, though, through those who followed him. Now let's look at our next word. All right, this one was two words. Did you get it? It's rule breaker. That sounds fun, doesn't it? The Pharisees and the religious leaders, they were very unhappy with Jesus for healing this man. Can you imagine that? They were unhappy with Jesus because he healed a guy. They were angry because Jesus had broke the rules about healing on a Sabbath day. They didn't yet understand the message of love that Jesus was bringing. Jesus was an unexpected twist to the story of the Savior that they were expecting. 
Gee, they were expecting a military guy to come and wipe out their enemies and set up a king and a palace with a crown and all kinds of stuff. But Jesus and his teaching, they turned the world upside down. He brought the message that the kingdom of God was here. This kingdom was unlike any the world had ever known. And God's kingdom, the first, will be last. And the least will be the greatest. And the poor will be blessed. What an awesome idea. One more word for you. Here we go. All right, you guys get that word? It's savior. Except it's spelled like they spell it on Australia because it was people from Australia that wrote this. Got, got an extra U in there. Where'd that U come from? Now, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books in the New Testament, they tell the story of Jesus' life on earth. From before he came, to his birth, and to his life, and teaching, and miracles, and then his death, and then his resurrection when he raised from the dead. When we follow Jesus, his story becomes our story. Jesus died and rose again to rescue us from sin, from the consequences of that. He is our savior. He is our hero. And he's one more thing. Check out this last word. All right, this might have been the easiest because it was the shortest of all. King. Jesus taught us all about the kingdom of God. We enter his kingdom when we make Jesus, the king of kings, the king of our lives. The kingdom of God is here. As such a great story, as such good news, that Jesus came to turn all the weirdness of this world upside down and to make things right again. He is the king of this world right now. And when we, uh, when we follow Jesus, uh, we say that we make God our savior. That means we ask God to save us from the consequences of our sins. But we also make God our Lord or our King. It means we're going to follow Jesus now and for the rest of our lives. I'm so glad that this unexpected twist to the story came and that Jesus showed us that the kingdom of God isn't just something far, far away that we'll get to one day. That the kingdom of God already started here. All right, well, that brings us to the end of our time looking at the greatest story ever told today. I hope you join me back tomorrow on The Daily Snack because we're going to be checking in at Big HQ as all the characters from Big are riding in this limo on the way to their movie premiere, and they're going to stuff one more person into that limo. There were like, I don't know, half dozen people in there last time I checked, so check me back tomorrow on that, and then we're going to talk movies on Thursday as well. So we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up this week on the daily snack it's a great way to wrap up the end of our first season uh this week so can't wait to see you tomorrow bye-bye uh, oh i've got one more thing for you uh let's check out our big word for this for this week we started last week we looked at some kids dancing i promise that you get 10 of you put videos of you dancing on our jc kids facebook page that i would post a video of me dancing so far i don't have any takers so Dig in with this, and uh, maybe, maybe none of you want to see me make a fool of myself dancing. I, that's okay with me, but I would really love for you to learn this little bit of the Bible through our big words. So have fun watching these kids dance. Practice it yourself. And if enough of you dig in with it, I'll be making a fool out of myself with a dance video too. Look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Send a son to be the savior of the world. Whoa, oh, savior of the world. God sent his son to be the savior of the world. Whoa, oh, savior of the world. We saw his son, and I'm now telling others about him. One door for four Savior of the world, whoa, oh, Savior.
Guess what day it is? Huh? Anybody? Julie, hey, guess what day it is? Oh, come on, I know you can hear me. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Leslie, guess what today is? It's hump day. Woo -woo! Ronnie, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? I'd say happier than a camel on Wednesday. Hump day! Get happy. All right, you made it hump day Wednesday. It is uh, Wednesday. Welcome to the Daily Snack. My name is Jeff. This is our final Wednesday of the first season of the Daily Snack. We've been together for about, man, three months now. It's been so fun. We've had a ton of fun uh, here at the Daily Snack, but we're getting ready to take a little bit of a pause. Now, first of all, if you haven't checked out our first couple episodes of the Daily Snack this week, go back, watch them. On Monday, we looked at some of the fun that we've had uh, over the course of this first season of the Daily Snack. Yesterday, we started talking about an unexpected uh, twist in this plot of the greatest story ever told. We looked at how the kingdom of God is here. We looked at a whole bunch of upside down words. Uh, I did this with my kids at home. They got like one of these words. They were pretty difficult to read upside down. I can't wait. If you haven't looked at it yet, you've got to check it out. It's pretty challenging stuff and a lot of fun. But today on the Daily Snack, uh, we're going to be check back in with Big HQ and see what's happening with uh, all the gang there as they're in the limo on their way to the big movie premiere. They've got, I don't know, like a half dozen at least people stuffed in this limo. They're picking someone else up. I have no idea who it is. Uh, if you haven't checked out the previous episode of this, go back to the Wednesdays of the previous week's Daily, Daily Snack. And you can see, I think uh, maybe there's four episodes before this. So you can, you know, binge, catch up. And then we're going to head right now out to Big HQ and see how the limo ride is going. Let's check it out. Previously on Big. <laughs> Are you excited for the premiere of your movie, Funny? I may have promised a few people that would pick them up first. Oh, sure. You're the boss. Dave! B! Uh, Director direct, Tony! Direct, direct, direct. Grace! Zach! Sally! What? Is your whole family here? We're still missing 43 cousins and a dog named Harold. One, two, three, four! Wow, a limo! <laughs> we were worried when we found out you were organising the transport. Why? Remember the time you organised Bean to give us a lift to the airport? Ta-da! Let's roll! <sighs> well, this is perfect. Well, almost perfect. We are missing Sophie. Oh, yeah. I miss her. Do you remember the time she ordered a giant nativity scene? Delivery for a Sophie, one nativity scene, the whole package. It's here! <laughs> Sophie, will it fit in here? Shouldn't we get it delivered to back dock? It will be fine. I want you to all see it. What is this? That's not what I ordered. Yes, it is. We got an email requesting the order be changed to a mole-sized nativity. Look. But I never sent that. Someone's up to no good. The, the shenanigans, shenanigans bandit! So, what is a shenanigans bandit? That was before you were with us. We've got a story to tell you. Listen carefully. Now, this street festival needs to be a complete success. Yes, sir. Yes. You heard the big boss. Tony needs his best and brightest on this one. If we put our minds to this and work together, nothing can go wrong. Attention, everybody. Something's gone terribly wrong. Hmm? Uh, yeah. Dan's won 10 games in a row. 
There have been increased sightings of shenanigans in the area. I believe it's the work of the shenanigans bandit. Shenanigans Bandit! Yes. Who's this? Only the greatest detective who solved the mystery of the Shenanigans Bandit! Really? Come! Yes. Oh. I did not agree with those posters at all. Wait a minute. Now, I spent a lot of time on those posters. posters. They were oh, good graphic design. I would have picked the posters. You had to accomplish the purpose for what we needed to accomplish. All right. Set me down. And I caught him! Dark Crush! I'm more than one Dark Crush band. That's right. We're here to play you our latest jam. It's all about Jesus and Unexpected Twists. It's called Jesus and Unexpected Twists. It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest... God's people were waiting for years the coming Messiah who would be revealed. He'd set them free, conquer their foes, but he had a plan he couldn't disclose. What a twist no one saw coming. His plan was across. Isn't that stunning? No one expected this ordinary mate to be the Messiah. Now, now isn't, isn't that great? great? It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest. All right, see you later. What a great song. Realise what they're doing. They're just changing the verses. So, what happened to the Shenanigans Bandit? You will not believe the ending. The star of the festival will be international pop sensation Crystal Cube. Good news. Wow, I love her music. She is such an amazing singer. I can't believe I get to be Crystal Q. <gasps> we are totally going to be BFFs. I made her this card. I hope she likes it. It took me ages. I made this poster for her last concert. She's totally going to remember. Hello, darling, sweetie sugar. I have arrived. <gasps> Crystal, Crystal Q. Q. Am I sugar? Oh, fantastic. I'm starving. Such a long flight from Hollywood. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, <laughs> Something's happened to Miss Crystal. <gasps> the Shenanigans Bandit! Oh, we knew this was going to happen. Gosh, why did we have to be such genius detectives? What happened? Where's the star? There was smoke, there was noise, and she was gone. The Shenanigans Bandit. <sighs> There's only one thing we can do. What? We must cancel the festival. <gasps> Is everyone OK? Who are you? I'm Police Inspector Waits. I'm the man in charge, the big boss. Well, sir, the shenanigans bandit has struck again. We must cancel the festival. <sighs> well, I guess... Stop! I know who the shenanigans bandit is! Who? Well, what happened? I'll tell you straight after we've watched Church Babies. Hey, hello there, my dainty little duck. Hi. <laughs> so good to be back here at the church. Church. <laughs> yes, my friend. But I've had a rough week. No. Yes. On Monday, I saw a butterfly. Butterfly. <laughs> yes. On Tuesday, I saw another butterfly. Butterfly. On Wednesday, I got in trouble for throwing butter off the roof. I love seeing the butterfly. <laughs> The butter fly. <laughs> you get it? Because I, I throw the butter. Like, I love the, the butterflies. Yeah? Huh? No. Oh, fine. Look, it doesn't matter. Oh, you're the only one who listens to me, so let me tell to you. And number one problem of week. You see, in church today, we learn about the kingdom of God. This confused me. Confused? Yes, 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 because... I don't know where is this kingdom. Is it in clouds behind the rainbow? Rainbow. Well, yeah, yes, or is it under bed? I uh, ask these questions, but big talking adult person does not hear me. Yeah. What was that, my friend? Here. Yeah. <gasps> Are you telling to me 
that the kingdom of God is actually here. It lives in our hearts for those who have accepted Jesus. Is that what you are telling to me, my friend? What? I said, the kingdom of God... Can you not hear me? I can't hear you. Oh. Well, what's the point of me talking, you know? <laughs> I uh... tricked you. <laughs> Oh, you think this is funny? You think you think you make fun of Boris? What was that? Oh no 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 no! <laughs> I want to go home right now. I want to go home as soon as possible, please. Well, who was it? Well, the baby on the left is Boris, and then. No, that... Becky. Who was the shenanigans oh. bandit? Back to the story now. Where were we? Stop! I know who the shenanigans bandit is. Who? <laughs> None other than you, big lying eagle. What? You can't have figured it out. Who are you? Whoa! Stern! Yes, it is I, Foony Man Stern, your arch nemesis. I can't believe this! The boys were right! It was I who masterminded the saboteuring of your beloved event. And I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you. Hey, oh, excuse me. Do you mind if I just finish it off? I've just got a little bit more. Right! Ha! Ha! This is not the last you'll see of me, Foony Man Dan. No way. That was an unexpected twist. It was the exact opposite to what we're expecting. Imagine getting a shtan when you're expecting a Dan. Shocking. And just like Dark Crush was singing, the Israelites were expecting a messiah who would lead the army, not someone who would lose their life. He didn't come to set them free from their troubles. He came to set them free from their sin. Talk about an upgrade. I'd take that offer any day of the week. Now, all who believe will be saved. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That was Jesus teaching us how to pray. His kingdom is on earth now, and it gets bigger every time someone accepts him as their savior, their king. Speaking of unexpected twists. Hey, Sophie! Sophie! I can't believe you're back. Did you think I'd miss the opening of your movie? Plus, I'm the one with all the experience on the red carpet, and I'm here to make sure that you don't embarrass yourselves. Oh, we're stopping again? Just picking up another friend. Who? All right, what are they up to? Like eight people in that limo? And does anyone else notice that uh, director Tony and Bean just like disappear sometimes and then reappear? That's really kind of strange. I wonder what that's all about. Uh, well, I think they're having a great time. I can't wait to find out who's getting in that limo next. Uh, I'll describe how you're going to find that out next. But let me just recap a little bit as we talk about this unexpected twist. Because, you know, there in the limo, they were talking about this upside down kingdom that God uh, brought about with Jesus. How Jesus didn't really fulfill everyone's expectations. And uh, it's really an interesting deal. You know, Jesus talked about the kingdom of God and the people back then who listened, man, they got confused. And I mean, if we're honest, sometimes when we hear Jesus talk about his kingdom, we get pretty confused. Because when we think of kingdoms, we think of kings who were mean and harsh and all about power and authority and all kinds of stuff. They ruled over people just kind of like this. They kept people in their place. But you know what? Jesus describes a, diff a, a kingdom that is very different. It is unexpected and it is upside down. And we're going to talk more about that tomorrow on the episode of The Daily Snack as we dig into some movies. We're going to be talking movies tomorrow and the greatest story ever told and this unexpected twist. So I hope you join us back tomorrow. Now, I mentioned that this is the final week of the first season of The Daily Snack. Uh, so you've only got a couple more episodes and then we're going to take a pause. And you're going to say, well, how are we going to find out what happens in the limo? How are we going to do all this? Well, I'll tell you, every Sunday, we're still going to have a video experience for you. And on that video experience, we're going to have uh, we're gonna have some fun. We're going to sing some songs. We're going to check in with Big HQ. And we're going to hear about the greatest story ever told. So we're definitely not abandoning you. We're just taking uh, you know, an in-between season pause on the Daily Snack. And we'll be back in May with season number two. 
All right, well, thanks for spending time with me today. Hope you had a great time watching today's video. And I hope you join me back tomorrow as we talk about some movies and more about the greatest story. Oh, yeah. Young man, always surfing, no ways. Well, hey kids, this is Jeff. It is Thursday on The Daily Snack. Thanks for coming and spending a little bit of time with me. This is our second to last day of the uh, first season of The Daily Snack. We've been here for about three months of The Daily Snack, and it's been a great season. On Monday, we took a look back at some of the fun we had, and uh, man, I'm going to miss you guys in The Daily Snack for a few weeks, but we'll be back in May with new additions, new, a new season of The Daily Snack. Now, if you haven't watched this week, we've had a great week. Like I said, we looked back a little bit at, uh, at some of the fun that we've had over the first season of The Daily Snack. We've taken a look at the greatest story ever told and seen how there's an unexpected twist to uh, this story that we learned that the kingdom of God is here. And we did that by looking at upside down writing and watching some church babies. And man, it's been a great week. I hope you go back and check it out if you've missed it. Now, in today's episode of The Daily Snack, let's talk about movies. Now, I, I'm guessing you like watching movies. I love watching movies. What kind of movies do you like best? For me, it's adventure movies. If there's any kind of movie that has some kind of hero who's on a quest to find the treasure or save the princess or save the world, I love it. Uh, I love Harry Potter. I've watched all those Harry Potter movies a million times. Uh, Wonder Woman? Uh, I love Wonder Woman. That was great. I love the old Star Wars movies, the uh, the old uh, 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 Indiana Jones movies I love. I mean, like I said, anytime there's a hero trying to save the world, save the princess, find the treasure, whatever it is, I'm there. Now, let's talk about some movies today. I've got... Uh, what do I got? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pictures for you that are clues to the name of some movies that have been released within the last, you know, probably last half dozen years or so. So none of these are real old. Uh, actually, a couple of them are a little bit older, but uh, seven movies. We're going to see how many you can guess. And here we go with our first one. I'm going to put this picture on the screen right now. I'll give you about five seconds to look at it. All right, do you know the name of that movie? It is Finding Nemo, Finding Nemo. How many of you guys have watched Finding Nemo? That one's been out there for a little while now. Uh, that was after my childhood, but kind of before I had kids of my own, but I definitely have watched this movie. I love Nemo, I love Dory, I love the little, I don't remember the turtle's name, but I love the little turtle. It's a great movie. If you haven't watched it, Disney movie, man, you gotta check that one out. Okay, here is picture number two. Five seconds. All right. Did you get this one? It is Star Wars. Star Wars. Now, these movies started coming out actually when I was kind of a little, little, little kid. But they just keep making more of them because people love them so much. I love all the Star Wars. See, some people, some people like some of them, not others, not me. I love every single one. I even love Jar Jar Binks. I think he's kind of pretty, pr pretty cool, uh, weird character. All right, next picture. Here we go. Five seconds on the clock. All right, this one might have been a little bit harder. What do you think? It is Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. I've also watched most of those movies. I'm watching through them right now with my kids, actually. I've watched The Hobbit. Uh, actually, I don't think I've seen anything past The Hobbit, but they're all on my to-do list because we read the stories together, and now we need to watch them. The books are always better, by the way. As much as I love a good adventure movie, an adventure book is always better, just between me and you. All right, here we go. Next picture. All right, did you get it? It is Toy Story, Toy Story. Man, this is one of my favorite animated groups of movies. I've definitely seen these things. I haven't seen the most recent one that came out. I still need to see that one, but man, I love to Toy Story. Uh, I never, ever, ever, ever cry at all uh, during a Toy Story. You know the one where uh, the kid realizes that he's given his toys away and he kind of misses them? Never cried during that, ever. All right, next picture. All right, did you get this one? This is one that I have not seen. It is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Great superhero. Is that Marvel? I think that's Marvel. I have a hard time keeping up with all the superhero movies. They come out so quickly that I just can't keep up with them. All right, here we go. Next picture. 
All right, you get this one? It is Up! Up! I love this movie, Up! I love the dog. Uh, that's one of my favorite parts of this movie. I love the movie Up. All right, and last picture I have here. All right, and it is Smallfoot. This is also a movie that I haven't seen yet. Uh, I think it's on one of my streaming services. I need to watch it. I, I mean, I tend to love these animated movies. I don't know if you've seen Smallfoot or not. It, the previews looked good. I got to check that one out still. All right, now let's talk about movies a little bit because every good story, whether it's a book or a movie, it has a plot twist, something that you didn't see coming because otherwise it would be pretty boring and something unexpected happens, something that you thought the good guy turned out to be a bad guy or you find out at the end of the movie that the whole thing was someone's dream. That's always a fun little movie uh, plot. And the key to a good movie is that it's not predictable and what happens next is not what you're expecting. Now, the Bible is actually full of unexpected twists. The sun stands still in the middle of the sky for a whole day during a battle. A man is swallowed up by a fish and lives to tell the tale. A small boy defeats a giant with just a little rock and a sling. And the most unexpected twist of all is what we're talking about this week. A hero, a savior that comes as a little tiny human baby born to a poor family in an unimportant town, actually in a barn. He's born in a barn. Jesus teaches us about the kingdom of God, an unexpected twist that the religious people, the religious leaders, they didn't see coming and they didn't like. In the kingdom of God, things are often the opposite of what we expect. For example, Jesus said that in his kingdom, the last will be first and the first will be last. He also said, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. He said also, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And he also told people that they should love their enemies and pray for people who pick on them. Man, in our world, people want to be first, not last. People want to be great, not the servant. They usually want to get things instead of give them away. And they definitely want to get even with people who are mean to them rather than, uh, Pray for them. It's just way, way different than the way our world works. You know, God's kingdom, honestly, it can see seem upside down. It, it's an unexpected twist on the way our world works. Jesus is the hero of our story, a savior, and he brings a message that from the time he set foot on earth, forever and evermore, things will be different. The kingdom of God is here. And I've got to say, the way that Jesus describes the way the world working in his kingdom, that's a whole lot better than the way our world works right now, if you just think about it a little bit. All right, I'm going to finish with a little bit of a story about this upside down, unexpected kingdom. But before I get to that, uh, I want to invite you back tomorrow for our final episode of the first season of The Daily Snack. We're going to Club Dance, and tomorrow we're going to look at a new Music Friday. We're going to look at new music that I've never played for you guys before. Some of this stuff was written like in the past couple of months. We're going to be doing this stuff live at Kids Church at Journeys Crossing Church. So I'm going to introduce stuff that we're going to be doing live here for the first time tomorrow on the daily snack i hope you join me and let me let this movie about this unexpected twist to the great kingdom of god take us away the four gospels at the beginning of the new testament are told through the eyes of matthew mark luke and john each book tells of jesus's time on earth performing miracles healing the sick he came to earth to glorify his father but he came at a time when his nation had been taken over by the Romans. They were in charge, and God's people thought that maybe this Messiah would come as the leader of an army. But he didn't. The religious leaders thought the Messiah would tell them what a great job they were doing. But he didn't. One day, while Jesus was in the synagogue, the church of the day, he saw a man with a crippled hand. However, it was the Sabbath day, where no work was to be done according to the law. But Jesus said, What does our law allow us to do on the Sabbath? Save someone's life or destroy it? So Jesus healed the man's hand. But the Pharisees, the religious leaders, were very unhappy with Jesus' choice to heal the man. How dare he heal on the Sabbath? Jesus was an unexpected twist 
a surprise to the Pharisees. As word of what Jesus was doing began to spread, more and more people began to follow his teachings, and the followers of Jesus grew greatly in number. The books of Matthew to John speak not only of Jesus' ministry on earth, but also of those who came before him, like John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Jesus' coming. The message of good news of the kingdom of God coming to earth was delivered to each place he traveled and continued on through the disciples who followed him. The Gospels tell us of Jesus' teaching on earth, which was unexpected and so different from anyone who'd come before. We will continue learning more about this unexpected twist as we go deeper in the greatest story ever told. Another week, congratulations, and welcome to the Daily Snack. My name is Jeff. This is the last episode of the first season of the Daily Snack. We've made 60 of these things so far. This is episode number 60. You can go back and watch 59 other episodes back on this YouTube uh, page right here, this page on this YouTube channel. You can watch all 60 episodes of the Daily Snack, but Hey, welcome here to this Friday. And, and for you guys, too, this is the beginning of spring break. Some of you have gone back to school. You've been in school two weeks, and now you get a week and a half off. So, man, two weeks. Woo! Man, you need some time off after that. All right. So, we're here at Club Dance. We always head to Club Dance on Friday, and we always have a theme. And the theme this week is New Music Friday. I got a third song for you that we're also going to be introducing in the next, you know, few weeks at Kids Church. It's a song called Indescribable. Now, if you've been to Kids Church here, you might say, now, wait a minute. We sing this, like, slow song called Indescribable. This one's different. Completely different song, completely different lyrics, completely different music. Just happens to be the same word uh, in the word because God is indescribable. It's hard to describe who God is. So it's not surprising that a lot of people have written music that talks about how hard it is to describe who God is. In this song, Indescribable, they talk about how amazing God is, how he seeks us out, how he loves us, and the love that God has for us truly is indescribable. This is by Hillsong, Young and Free. We sing some of their other songs. In Kids Church, Wake is one of their songs. Uh, Real Love is one of their songs. Love Won't Let Me Down is one of their songs. So we sing a lot of their stuff in Kids Church, but this is brand new music for them called Indescribable.
right, that was it. A, uh, a, 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 a triple threat of new music that we're going to be introducing in Kids Search. We haven't introduced new music to you guys in like a year because we've been a little bit distant. It's a little bit hard to do that over video. So we're going to be introducing that live. We're going to keep it going over video so that whenever you do uh, join us, you'll be already in the know on what these new songs are all about. Well, this is it, the end of the first season of The Daily Snack, uh, 60 episodes in. It's time to take a little bit of break and plan for season two, which starts in May. So we'll be ramping you guys up for that in May. Now, how do you keep connected with us in between now and then? How do you keep going with what's what's going on? What are, who's getting in the limo next at Big HQ? What's, what's happening? Well, let me tell you, first of all, we're going to be meeting in person on Sunday starting on April 4th. And we're also at the same time going to have a video for you on Sunday. So if you're ready to come back and be in person, we got you covered. If you're not ready to be around people yet, we got you covered too. So every weekend we're going to be in person and on video, both happening at the same time. So we've got you covered for the month of April. And then when May comes... We're ready to start the daily snack again with season two. We're going to learn a little bit from what we did in season two, one. We're going to come back, I think, with a lot, uh, a lot more fun, a lot more games. It's going to be better, even better than season one was. So until I get to see you next, whether it's in here at the building or on video, uh, have a great time. Keep on your journey to find this Jesus guy we talk about and learn what it means to follow him every day. I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye-bye, guys. Yeah. Young man, always surfing, no waves. Who I do it for? Who I do it for? I do it all. I do it all. I do it for the kids.